scattered. <laughs> scared. <laughs> These days, many of us seem to have the urge to be whisked and whirled around. Although during it, it doesn't always sound fun. But when it's all over, well, perhaps it was. Oh, brilliant, that. Brilliant, it was great. <laughs> like an absolute piece of jelly. <laughs> I certainly could hear. But who's the person actually behind designing a ride like this? Making the decisions to inflict all this on people? My searches brought me here, to ARM and their factory workshop near Oxford. The man I was looking for was Tony Sefton. Fairground owners come to him as he can convert any idea for a ride into the real thing. He holds a license to thrill. Hi, Tony. Hello, yes. Hello, nice to meet you. Do come up to the office. How do you start even thinking about a ride like this? Right, well, I get given a sketch. Um, it's all very well drawing a sketch on paper. I have to do the hard work of designing this now, taking it from this sketch right through to the final finished product. And that involves a lot of hard work before it even goes out into the workshop to be made. To make a fairground ride, Tony has to be able to predict all the forces involved. Forces that will cause the ride to tilt, twist, and turn. Okay, we'll go up now. Yeah. To work out exactly the size of the forces involved, he uses a computer to simulate the ride, a sort of mock up, long before it reaches the factory floor. To actually simulate the ride, it involves six million numbers that are all stored inside the computer and that predict all the forces on the ride. You can imagine you're looking down on the ride and you're looking at one car and how it spins. You can see it starts off slowly and as the ride builds up speed, you'd be all right on the end of that line that's flipping there, so you can imagine how you'd feel. And feeling forces is the easiest way for all of us to know they're there. The main forces are the ones that we're putting on the rider due to all the motion of the ride. We're being thrown in all sorts of directions. So for every little bit of movement there, you experience a force. But there's another force here easy to forget. It's something Tony relies on all the time. Yo! What can you presume when you're making a ride like this? Well, the only thing you can really presume is the gravity and gravity it's acting on all of us all of the time. And it's very useful as an amusement ride designer because you, uh, it holds you in the seat. So we have to make sure that the forces being produced by the ride in an upwards direction aren't bigger than the gravity forces in a downward direction. 
you get thrown out of the seat. Upwards. Upwards, <laughs> yes, and we don't want that. The great thing about gravity is that we can always rely on it to pull us down towards the ground, even at the scariest of moments. My stomach kept turning over and just felt, I wanted to get up a lot of times, you know, it's really scary. When, you, when you're going down, you sort of like, your stomach's, you're going down but your stomach's coming up, you know what I mean? Well, some of the rides you think, oh my God, I'm going to fall out of, but then you think, well, it we wouldn't be here if you were going to fall out of it sort of thing, so you think, oh well, what the hell, I'm going to go down. Gravity can and does give us a thrill. But most of the time, it's simply busy keeping our feet firmly on the ground. But the funfair is a place to experience a whole range of forces, and it's the combination of them that can affect us in many different ways. A little bit dizzy and wobbling a bit, and I need to sit down and get my breath back a bit. <laughs> When I go on rides, I feel quite sick, and sometimes I am sick. When you're going round in a ride, uh, you go all dizzy and everything, and you start to get feeling sick. To find out more about just how our bodies can be affected by forces, I've come here to the RAF's Institute of Aviation Medicine. I had to slip on something more appropriate because I was off to meet Dr. John Golding in his vibration laboratory. John, tell me what you do here. My job's to make people sick <laughs> and then cure them. It's a funny old job, really, making people sick. Yes, I mean, we have our laughs here. <laughs> you have to have a sense of humour. What John does is subject people to a series of tests. You take it up fairly slowly because you don't want to get a sudden belt. And of course, I was to be his next victim. So you're almost there. There you go. Reset and off we go. Moving like this might not look much, but I could feel a force on my body every time I went up or down, changing direction. And this changing direction can cause a problem. Believe it or not, for our ears. Fluid inside our ears gives us our sense of balance. If it's sloshing about like this, it can make you feel pretty ill. What makes you sick is the brain has the wrong signals, you get conflicting signals, and this makes you vomit. Many people would vomit chuck up within a few minutes but if we keep on repeating sessions over days and weeks on this machine then they'll become more and more resistant they'll tolerate it and that's exactly what John does he subjects RAF pilots to the same forces that may make them feel sick when they're flying so they can get used to them as for me I don't suffer from motion sickness at all and I was having a great time This is Louisa Knapp. As a professional aerobatic pilot, she needs to understand how forces affect her while she's flying. In my job as an aerobatic pilot, I change speed and direction a lot, and I feel the effects of that uh, to a great extent. Louisa feels many forces from her flying. One she constantly has to think about is a force from outside her plane, a force from the air. When I fly, you have air coming towards the aircraft, which is acting on the aircraft, but it's not simply that. You've got the aircraft moving through the air, so the aircraft is acting against the air. So you have those two things acting together. And it's called air friction, sometimes it's called drag. As Britain's top female aerobatic pilot, Louisa takes part in air shows all around the country. 
thrilling audiences with her spectacular stunts. Everything is done through the eyes and, and just through feeling, seat of the pants flying, they call it. And all it means is because on your body, you feel which side you're turning, which way you're being pulled or pushed. And that gives you an understanding of where you're going and what you're doing. Louisa's plane is changing speed and direction like this, she can feel extremely heavy one minute and very light the next. None of us need to go flying to feel heavier or lighter. We can do it quite simply down here on Earth. Have you ever noticed how you feel heavy when a lift suddenly begins to go up? or lighter when it suddenly starts to come down. We might not feel that much of a difference in a lift, but I felt an enormous difference in one of these. The force of the rocket was so great I felt incredibly heavy, being continually pushed down into my seat. Booster rockets meant we reached a speed of 29,000 kilometers an hour in just a few minutes. But by the time we caught up with the space station, I felt completely different because the space station, like the lift, is actually falling, falling round and round the Earth. There's still gravity here, even though we're 400 kilometers above the Earth. And it's gravity that's actually making the space station fall. And when you're falling like this, you don't just feel light, you feel weightless. Once I was weightless, there was no force left to tell me up from down. So, I mean, I felt exactly the same if my feet were up and my head down my feet down, my head up, it made no difference at all. This meant we couldn't put anything down. Everything appeared as weightless as we were, so we had to tie things to a surface, otherwise they'd simply float away. The funny thing was, of course, that the food didn't sit down at the bottom of my stomach. I could feel it floating around inside. Even the water droplets weren't drop shape like on Earth. They were pure round spheres of water. To return to Earth, we had to use rockets as we needed to slow down in order to travel towards the atmosphere. Gravity was pulling us towards the Earth, and once we were slow enough, we could rely on it to pull us back down. Here I felt incredibly heavy, but it wasn't long before I got used to it again.
Many rides at the fun fair rely on gravity. The thing about gravity is that it can be used to power some rides, but it always acts in a downwards direction. So initially, all these cars have to be hauled up to a really high beginning of the ride. From then on, gravity is the only thing that keeps these cars going. Throughout the ride, the speed of the cars is continually changing. Every time the cars go down, gravity makes them go faster. Their way up, gravity causes them to go slower. Getting the ups and downs just right is all the fun. There's a different way of looking at how a ride like this works, and that's by understanding the energy involved. Without energy, none of this could happen. The initial energy for this ride is coming from a motor, which has had to work hard to raise the cars up this steep slope. This energy is being transferred into the cars, energy now known as potential energy. Right at the top there is where potential energy is being transferred into kinetic energy. There they go. Kinetic energy is moving energy. The faster you're moving, the more kinetic energy you have. Losing height means you're losing the potential energy you had at the beginning. As you're falling, your potential energy is decreasing. And the further you fall, the less and less you have. But some rides don't seem to have any potential energy from height and start on ground level. This was one of them, and I'd been warned. So just where was all this energy coming from? The answer was in the tower at the end. Inside here, there's a huge 35-ton weight. By winching it all the way up to the top, the weight will provide enough energy for the ride. Because when it's dropped, a steel cable yanks the cars into motion. And once that's happened, they have enough energy to make it through the loop. And just enough to get back round again. So next time you're at the fun fair, think about the many things that go into making these rides successful. How getting the combination of forces and energy just right requires expert knowledge. Knowledge from someone like Tony, whose job is to thrill. And how people like John work with forces every day. 
and there's Louisa who uses their effects in her displays. People's enjoyment of them can go one stage further. There have been some very strange ways in which people have left churches after their wedding. Spear first. But <laughs> there will be times in your married life where you'll need to hang on to each other. And this might just be one way in which we can symbolise at least the first time that you've really depended upon each other. <laughs> Tina and Andrew, the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Why do we put ourselves through all this? That's because it's fun! 